I get questions all the time from people about what's the difference between Enigma.js and RxQ, or, or even better, which one is better to use? So I want to give a, shine a little light on that today and answer that question. And first of all, I want to say that neither one is better than the other. What you're going to see today is that they're just different approaches or different programming styles to solving the same kind of problem. So what do these libraries try to do? Both of them are JavaScript libraries that help you interact with the click engine in a browser in Node. So they're really doing the exact same things. The only difference is kind of in the programming style, they're using two separate entities to handle that interaction. So when we're dealing with a click engine on a server, we're dealing with an asynchronous uh, operation, right? We have to make a network request to do things like make selections, open documents, fetch data from the server. The server has to do its work to get all that ready and then send it back over the network. So there are different ways to handle asynchronous behavior in, in JavaScript. The first one are called promises, and that's what Enigma.js is built on. And the idea behind a promise is that it can kind of always just return one value. So you can initiate a promise with you know, some sort of operation or some sort of asynchronous whatever, and eventually it returns with a value and then it's done. Observables can do the same thing. However, observables can do multiple values. So observables, you can set up and say, hey, I want to say subscribe to this event of, of things and I'll get multiple values over time that we can keep listening for. So that's really the difference between Enigma and RxQ. That's really it, it's just programming style. One uses promises, and you can build very complex applications on that type of architecture. And the other one, RxQ, uses observables, and you can also build very complex applications on, the type of that, on top of that architecture. And really the difference is just what the difference is between promises and observables. So if you wanna know more about that, I was just giving it a Google, you'll see some, some kind of this this article is very good where it summarizes you know promises are single value observables handle multiple values. Uh, there's a difference between what's eager versus lazy. Promises initiate immediately. Observables only initiate when someone is listening for the actual result. And there's other differences about cancelability and and things like that. Uh, but that's really the difference. Now what most people don't realize is that it's actually very easy to go from a promise to an observable. If you think about the idea that an observable can send out multiple values and a promise can only kind of receive one value, then really a promise is in some ways like an observable that just gets one value and then is done. What that means for Enigma users is that if you want to try reactive programming today, if you want to play with observables and see how those work with the engine, you don't have to start a project from scratch with RxQ. You don't have to refactor your entire app with RxQ. You don't have to do any of that. Um, you can actually take Enigma today and with one line of code, start using observables in it. Essentially start to use the same patterns that you might use in an RxQ style application. So I wanna show you exactly how that's done. It's very simple. So let's take this Enigma example here. What I'm doing in this example is I'm, I'm loading up Enigma and I'm connecting to an application on a server. And I'm doing typical Enigma type stuff with promises. So I say open a session. This is going to be a promise for the, the global handle in that session. And then in that global handle, I say, okay, when that, when that handle comes back asynchronously, let's open that document. And that'll give me back the app promise. So the promise for that app handle when it's done opening. And then I, I keep going from there. I create a generic object where I say, you know, uh, when the app handle comes back from the promise, create this object that has this sum of sales amount. And then I do some layout stuff. I say, okay, whenever that object changes, whenever the, the Enigma tells us that the model's been invalidated, let's get the layout and render that layout to the browser. Specifically, let's render the sales value. And also on initialization, let's go ahead and render that value. And the render function just prints sales equals the value to the, the, the browser. So here you have sales equals that number coming from the engine. It's a very simple use of Enigma with, with promises, right? So the promises you see the dot then, global dot then for the app, app dot then to create the object. When the object's created and you set up the events for, for getting the layouts and the initial layout. So to do this in an RxQ style with observables without actually even leveraging RxQ, but really just using one line of code to, to change the whole thing, you can actually just use a function that comes with RxJS called from. From will take uh, sort of iterable objects. It could be a promise. It could be another observable. It could be an array. There's, there's all kinds of different values it'll take. And it'll convert that into an observable, which means that to go from global promise to global observable, all it takes is wrapping that session.open in the from syntax. And now you're working with observables instead of, instead of promises. 
And so what's cool is you'll see that kind of can cascade down your application. You know, now that I'm using a, a global promise here that I got from Enigma by converting their promise to an observable, I could actually start to play with um, doing observable type things like using a switch map, which you'll see a lot in Arc's Q code, to take the global handle that's returned and return a promise inside here for that app. But uh, RxJS knows to turn that back into an observable, so now you have an app observable. And from there, you can create a sales object observable. And really, all the inner parts are still looking like Enigma. You have kind of the handle dot the method that returns a promise, and RxJS just keeps turning it back into an observable, which means you can start to leverage things like operators and observables to combine them in unique ways and things like that. And now what I want to point out here is you can try this anywhere in your app. You don't have to do this at the global level. I could have taken, you know, uh, this object, for example, and converted it into an uh, observable right here. So I could have just said, if I was importing RxJS here, you know, I could say sales object dollar equals from sales object. Now, I don't have that library loaded right now, so we're going to get some errors. But uh, the point being that, like, anywhere in your Enigma infrastructure, you can start to, to play with observables. Now, the, the title of this video is a little clickbaity because while that gets you kind of close to RxQ, it doesn't really turn it into RxQ. RxQ is built from the ground up with observables and it has a lot of functions to, to make things uh, a little more useful for someone who's working in that kind of style of programming. Uh, for example, creating the kind of layout streams gets a little more complicated in um, when you're going in from Enigma to like an observable because you have to essentially use this observable.create syntax to say, you know, when my thing changes, let me get the layout and then send it through the observable or on a knit, go ahead and do that as well. And then you can kind of subscribe to that. So it's not as simple as one line for some of the kind of event driven stuff. Uh, but you can see from like RxQ, it's, it's fairly similar. So here's an RxQ example from the documentation where we create the session. And here's the global observable, and, and to get the app observable, you just use the pipe syntax and ask for you know the open doc command, and then to get the object observable, you ask you do a pipe and you ask for the create session object command with this data, and then uh, of course argxq ships with some other methods to make kind of natively working with observables more easier, right? So you can hook into invalidation chains and into get layout um, calls and things like that. But I hope this video kind of shows you that there's really not that much of a difference between Enigma and RxQ. Under the hood, they're just using a WebSocket and they're returning the result of the API calls over that WebSocket in two different wrappers, right? Enigma's promises, RxQ's observables. And if you want to play with observables today in your code just to see how that style of programming feels and, and what you get out of it, again, you don't have to migrate your whole app to RxQ. You can actually take Enigma and turn some of the promises it provides into observables and work with it from there. Check the description of this video. I'll link out to these uh, code sandbox links so that you can check this code out yourself.